Thank you for your interest in our study of CSF catecholamines in delirium and dementia that we will take you through for the next few minutes. Delirium, or acute confusion, describes an acute and fluctuating disturbance in attention, awareness and cognition, which is a consequence of another medical condition such as a hip fracture, pneumonia or COVID-19. Among hospitalized patients, Delirium is a common complication, and it is more easily precipitated in people with dementia. Delirious patients are confused, often afraid, and do not understand and misinterpret assessment and treatment. Unfortunately, there are no established treatment of delirium, and the pathophysiology is incompletely understood and assumed heterogeneous with several mechanisms at play. Suspected neurotransmitter disturbances include dopamine and noradrenaline. These systems are of interest as dopaminergic signaling has been targeted to prevent and treat delirium by use of antipsychotics, while there are indications of reduced delirium occurrence following use of alpha-2 agonists acting at adrenergic receptors. We therefore questioned if there are alterations in the cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, levels of the three catecholamines noradrenaline, adrenaline, and dopamine in patients with delirium. We studied this in hip fracture patients, patients with delirium due to another medical condition, medical delirium, and cognitively normal elderly. CSF was obtained in conjunction with surgery or for diagnostic reasons. Among the hip fracture patients, we found that those with delirium had lower CSF dopamine and adrenaline levels compared to those without delirium. The medical delirium patients also had lower CSF dopamine levels compared to the cognitively normal elders. Thus, CSF dopamine levels were lower among patients with delirium precipitated by two different medical conditions that align with not using antipsychotics, antagonizing dopaminergic receptors as a general delirium preventive measure. The hip fracture patients were the main study population. These included both patients with delirium before and after surgery and with and without dementia. In subgroup analysis of patients without pre-fracture dementia, we observed that those with delirium after surgery had higher CSF noradrenaline levels than those without delirium, although this did not reach the significance level. However, it would be interesting to pursue this finding as it may indicate a beneficial effect to reduce delirium occurrence by using alpha-2 agonists. And with that, we would like to thank our employers and other study sponsors, and of course, you for listening and for your attention. You may find further details in the Brain Communication article. Thank you.